All right, hello and welcome to a RimWorld series. So, by popular demand, well, okay, demand from one guy, but he's popular with me, I'm going to start up a new colony here. So, if you're not familiar with RimWorld, this is uh, a game produced by Ludian Studios, and they describe it as a sci-fi colony simulator. And this choice of words is very careful and very deliberate. So, when you first look at this game, it looks like just your average, like, you know, open-world sandbox game. And, to be honest, sandbox games don't really catch my attention. I mean, everyone loves building an automated chicken farm, but I don't know. A after a while, like, I need a purpose, I need some kind of direction, or else I just get kind of bored and go off and do something else. So, what makes RimWorld different is that the story and the play here is very emergent. So, uh, there's almost no backstory. It's like three sentences right at the beginning of the game. And there's not really any conclusion. There are a couple of endgame points that you can reach, but even they don't actually end the game unless you want them to. And everything in the middle is just sort of open. But what's going on here is there are just this incredible number of moving parts that mesh together in any given RimWorld colony, uh, most of which are totally beyond your control. Every, every person, every animal has this complicated set of health conditions and likes and dislikes and relationships and their own motivations and you have just huge numbers of various events that get thrown at you by the AI. There's just a ton going on, and after a while, these really interesting stories, like I said, just kind of start to emerge out of this. I don't do a ton of kind of RP stuff when I play, but seriously, the first time you're playing RimWorld and you realize that you're complaining at someone because your timber wolves keep getting into the beer and one of them developed liver cirrhosis when they should be over in the other freezers snacking on the frozen corpses you've got in there like human nuggets, and you realize that, you know, you've got something kind of cool going on here. So, I love this game. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So, um, I run with a handful of mods. There's nothing particularly crazy in here. Um, I do like uh, EPOE, which lets you uh, build your own prosthetics, and then there's their companion for a dog said. Um, slightly more efficient lights, feed the colonists, and crafting hysteresis help. Um, just keep up with your production. We'll see that in a little bit. I like having one or two extra turrets. Most of the rest of this is just essentially uh, quality of life mods, so nothing too interesting going on there. So we'll start a new colony. I'm going to stick with the original crash landed, although I'm going to edit it a little bit later. So there's three different storytellers, and you can think of these in the most basic set as kind of AI presets. So um, each of the three different <coughs> pardon me, different storytellers will sort of present you with a different series of challenges as you're going through building your colony. So we've got Cassandra Classic and Phoebe Chillax and Randy Random. So Cassandra Classic, as it says here, you sort of get this steadily increasing curve of different challenges that are thrown at you. That's the one that I prefer because you sort of have to like, you're almost doing this Red Queen race to try to keep ahead of the various catastrophes. And I think that's really interesting. Um, Phoebe Chillax is similar, but you get like a lot more time to build your base, to you know, get your colonists trained up, so on and so forth. Um, this is a good one to start at. I tend to feel like I need more terrible things happening to me. Randy Random is essentially just random crap getting thrown at you. This is actually not one that I particularly care for because I don't like getting killed by cheap events. If I die because I'm bad at something or because circumstances conspire, conspire against me, fine. That's fine. If I die because I have one colonist and the game decides it'd be really funny to throw, like, a 50 Manhunter wolf pack at me, that's not fun. So you've got various um, challenge levels. I'm going to go ahead and flip on extreme. I can usually succeed on extreme depending on what the biome I go with is. I'd say about 80% of the time. So that should be okay. At least it'll make things interesting. So let's do our seed here. Here. Funny. I'm so hilarious. So we'll generate our world here. So, again, if you're not familiar with this, each of these hexes is essentially an area that you can start in. You get a description of what's going on, uh, you get a little bit of terrain, you get stuff like that. Um, there are various bases around for the different factions, the Skull and Crossbones are pirate bases. I almost always play in the polar regions. Um, I don't have a good reason why, I just think that playing in cold regions is fun. Uh, Certainly, all the extreme biomes represent a lot of challenges. The tropical jungle ones are really tough, and they require a lot of effort. Um, likewise, these ones that are super far north are also really tricky, and I don't know, I think it's great. 
So, let's see here. Let's look at our terrain. So, Ice Sheet is kind of what I think is fun to do. Um, you can see you've got different terrain here, large hills, small hills, so on and so forth. Um, the average temperature in the winter and in the summer, oh, that makes things exciting. Maybe I don't want to go quite that far north. No? Well, okay, apparently I do. Uh, I like small hills as opposed to either plains or mountainous or large hills. Just the more hills you have, it takes up space in the map. Um, I don't know. I like to have a balance. You need some so that you've got rock and you've got some mining available to you, but I'm not a big fan of having a ton. So, this should be okay. So, you can also play with the map size. The default size is fine. I typically go at least the next size bigger. By the time we get into late game, it starts to get choppy. I'm not really sure what the performance bottleneck is. My computer is not awesome, but it's not old. It's a uh, i5-4670 or something like that. And I've got 16 gig of RAM, but I don't know. After a couple years, performance may get a little crummy, but we'll deal with it at that point. So we'll go with a slightly larger size map. Ice sheet. Is that what we're doing? Ice sheet? Yes. Small hills. Okay. And I've got the size. Okay. So, and you get a bunch of different characters that are sort of developed randomly. I use the Prepare Carefully mod because it lets you sort of take a stab at your characters. You can see they've got a whole bunch of different randomly generated um, backstories. And what these do is these provide sort of a base for their various skills, for the things they can and can't do. Then the traits work into that as well. So you get various people that are incapable of doing something, or they're too smart, or they hate men, or whatever like that. I was playing around a little bit earlier, and I have a couple guys preset here. Mostly, what I really wanted to do here is I want to make sure that my initial colonists aren't going to cause the colony to collapse. Um, I need to make sure that I've got someone that can do each of kind of the various things. You know, someone that is okay at shooting, someone that, you know, has a certain amount of medical and then in this case, I need to make sure that I've got someone with at least a halfway decent animal level because we are going to be growing a bunch of bears. So those are my people. So this is going to give us our starting equipment. So I'm going to take some polar bears with us. And unfortunately, they're listed by things like F, female polar bear and male polar bear because of course we need a breeding pair. And yes, that's the thing that happens. So because I'm starting on an ice sheet with two large bears, I need to increase my pack of survival meals. Yes, this is a little cheaty, but it's so hard to get your food up in time as it is. And with two pets that are wandering around doing absolutely nothing useful, they really eat into your food supply, if you'll pardon the pun. In many map types, there'll be wildlife wandering all around, and bears will go off and hunt their own stuff, which is hilarious and very useful. The problem is, on an ice sheet, there are no wildlife. You know, maybe very occasionally something will wander in, but there's really nothing to eat. So I'm going to go ahead and at least give myself an extra couple days to try to get my um, hydroponics farms up and running. Let's see here. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat myself in a slightly better sniper rifle. I yes, it's a little cheap, but yet... I really don't want to fail in my very first streaming colony, so we'll toss that in there, and if that starts to become a little too easy as time goes by, I'll go ahead and drop that. Otherwise, I'm going to leave everything basically the same. You start with a little bit of silver, some food, some medicine, some components, um, some steel, some wood. Wood is going to be very, very valuable in this colony. There'll be no trees, and any wood that I need I'm going to have to purchase from traders, which are not terribly common, uh, aren't guaranteed to have wood. And there are certain structures, certain production buildings, uh, that must have wood. So if you use it all up building chairs and you realize that, oh no, now I can't build such and such crafting table, well, you're boned. And that's the end of it. So, all right. So, I think this will be okay. I'm wondering if I should give my guys some hats. I don't want them to all die, you know. Um, here. Let's have some hats. With the temperature of minus four, I'm a little worried that they're going to die. Let's have a couple of hats. Okay, that's all we get. All right, off we go. Let's get our map generated, and let's see what we've got going on here. If you think that I'm making this too easy, you can write me nasty messages in the comments. We'll have a discussion, and maybe I'll take your 
dots into consideration next time. All right, so this is basically the entire story. The three of you awaken crypto sleep sarcophagi to the sound of sirens and ripping metal. You barely get to the escape pods. The ships turn apart. You land in this unknown rim world. And that's it. As far as I know, you're traveling on a spaceship somewhere. I don't know where your starship's going. Um, a rim world is sort of evocative. It, um, you know, kind of on the frontier, maybe. So as we go here and land, what makes this really interesting in my mind is, for example, we're going to look for resources, right? There's compacted steel. And if you're not up on your metallurgy, steel is not a naturally occurring substance. It's made from iron. And there are um, areas around here. I don't... Here we go. Like you get components from compacted machinery, you know, from previous civilizations. So, ooh, there's this whole thing going on in the background. That's just really interesting to me. But anyway, so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to unforbid all the items on the map. So a bunch of stuff lands along with you. Uh, typically, you have to look around. Most items that land end up forbidden, which prevents your colonists from interacting with them. So, like, a bunch of wooden legs don't fall onto the map way across, and all of a sudden everyone drops what they're doing to go haul a bunch of wooden legs back to your base. At the beginning, I typically want pretty much everything hauled, so I'm going to go ahead and just unforbid everything. So let's take a look around at our map. This is the size map I like. I don't know. You get too big, and it gets hard to run the game. You get too small, and you don't have enough room to do anything interesting. So, it can be handy to build your bases inside of mountains to tunnel out your rooms. Personally, that's not a thing that I use anymore, because when you're building underneath a mountain, you get an event that's an infestation, you get these nasty bug hives that show up, they pop up in the middle of your base, they kill your sleeping colonists, they're a catastrophe. I hate them. I would actually rather deal with the difficulties of not having a mountainous roof and not have to deal with bugs. So, I build up next to mountains, but I don't tunnel under them in general. So, another thing I'm going to look for here is these steam geysers. A little bit later, we'll be able to research geothermal energy, and you plonk a generator on top of these, and they produce this nice steady supply of power. It's not a ton. You can get more power than them out of, you know, a couple, uh, a couple wind turbines or some solar panels or whatever, but there are two really important things. First of all, it's baseload, so you always have this nice steady supply of energy. Much more importantly, in this type of map, the steam geysers are hot and we are not going to have enough energy available to us, at least initially, to keep our colonists from not freezing to death. So a high priority here in the very beginning is going to be to build a little base, or a room rather, around a steam vent to make sure that we don't freeze to death. So let's take a look. So I like to play in the middle of the map, obviously. It gives you the most time to react to bad things that are happening. Like I said, I don't build inside of mountains, but I do like to have my backs up to some of them. Eventually, uh, you know, I'll have the whole place ringed in really fancy fortifications and stuff, but from the beginning I tend not to do that. You don't really need to be in the middle of the map, but that tends to reduce the travel time to the edges of the map, and in my opinion reducing travel time is probably the single most important thing to succeeding in RimWorld. It's just, it's so important to keep your guys working efficiently, because your colonists will cheerfully end up a bunch of slackers. So uh, I like these two spots right here, both of them have a geyser to build around. I think I'm actually going to start over here, and this is why. So most of this ground here is ice, and that's it. You can build on it, but it stays ice forever. Some of this, however, I'm sorry, you can see the ground type down here. This is gravel, and this is going to let us plant some plants in the gravel. It's a terrible growing medium, but it does grow some plants, and until we have a chance to get hydroponics researched and up and running, that is going to be our food source, and we will not survive without a food source. So. I'd rather use this one, but this is good. I can tuck my base right up in here. It's nice having deep water behind me. Oh, this is actually a really good place. So you can't cross deep water. So this actually provides a nice fortification all the way down to here. So that's going to limit where people can come at me from. So let's go ahead and do that. OK, so first of all, let's take a look at our colonists. So one of you guys is good at shooting, and the other two of you are not. OK, stone, you're not a bad shot. So why don't you go ahead and pick that up? And you're not a very good shot, but better than nothing. Laura, hi. So you go ahead and pick that up. And then there's a plasteel knife for my for Frederick, who's not a very good shot at anything. In general, I don't use melee weapons, and I'll come back to that later. Let's see. So we can assign them different outfits and different reactions to danger. We'll come back to that in a little bit. Um, you can restrict what they do and where they go. So this is the time-based schedule for every day. 
and you can block off certain times to do other things. Typically, I keep this relatively empty. In the evenings, I enforce some joy ties, joy time so that they, you know, take some time to go off and have fun and relax, and keeping their mood up is very important. And then I have just a couple hours of mandatory sleep. So they come back to base, they hang out for a bit, and then they go to bed. Now, this is just to kick them into sleep. After this, I leave the rest of the day unrestricted so that when they're done sleeping, they can get up. Uh, if they're not very tired and you make them sleep for eight hours, you're just losing a whole bunch of potentially useful time. And by leaving it open during most of the day, in general, they will tend to be off doing something useful, eating if they need to, working if you know they're supposed to be working, and so on and so forth. I micromanage my pawns mostly by job rather than by time. And you'll kind of see how I do it. So there's our work tab here, and this is where we're going to set everyone's various skills to go do things. So in my world, everyone needs to stop everything they're doing if there's a fire and go put it out. Fires are bad. If you're hurt, I want you to drop whatever it is you're doing, and I want you to go over and get cured. I'm one doctor. If there's a patient, I want to make sure and do it. If you're sick, I want you to go get bed rest. I may turn this down if it's something really important, like all my guys have the flu or something, and I need to make sure that my grower is at least harvesting food so my colony doesn't starve to death. But I'll deal with that if I need to. And flicking light switches. If I need a switch flicked, you should go and do it. Okay, so our bear handler is going to be number one. Warden is if uh, I have some prisoners. I'm not going to worry about that now. Negotiating is for entertaining guests and so on and so forth. Um, I guess I can leave that on. It doesn't matter. I don't have a good cook. That's going to be a little interesting. So I'll leave one person on cooking, and I'll leave the other two people on at the bottom. Cooking also include things like slaughtering animals and stuff like that, so it's okay to leave it on. When I set up jobs, which you'll see here in a little bit, I put skill minimums on it. So I'll say, you can't cook meals unless you have at least skill of four to keep your skill one people from coming in and giving everyone food poison. Hunting is not something I'm too worried about. Um, I'll leave it on. It doesn't really matter. We're not going to have too much hunting. Okay, so I do have some... 15 constructing. I didn't even notice that. Good for you. Let's see here. Growing. You're going to be my top growing person. You're not bad, and I'll leave this on. Everyone should have mining at least turned on, and plant turned on. Smithing can be creating other things, so we'll leave that on. The same with crafting. We'll turn off research for the moment. Everyone should be hauling. Everyone should be cleaning. Okay, so priorities start at this side and go that way, and then in decreasing order. So your pawns will start at this side and they'll move over until they hit a job that's one, then they'll do that. If there's no ones, then that starts over again at two. So priorities go both left to right and numerical order. So at the beginning here, I'm not going to have anything except for hauling going on. I am going to kind of flag two guys to haul and two guys to clean. It doesn't really matter at this point. We'll kind of come back to that. So let's define some zones. I keep home zoning turned off. I'd rather do it myself typically. So we're going to start our base right around here. So I'm going to define a couple different areas here that we want to begin with. So let's see here. First of all, we want a stockpile area. We're just going to carry all this crap and dump it. That can be here. I don't know. Whatever. doesn't matter. Now, this gravel area is small and few, and it needs to be a growing zone. Now, I'm not going to have the electricity, probably, to start um, to put up the lights and get this thing going right away, but we do want to get things started. Um, I guess potatoes are fine to begin with. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to close this in as efficiently as possible and then kind of move on from there. So it can be nice to set up some orders just so you can kind of get a feel for how you're going to have to build things. Let's see here. I guess it'd be easier... We are going to end up rebuilding this at some point. Wow, this is a really big starting room. Okay, I'm going to have to start a little smaller than this to begin with so my guys don't freeze to death. So let's go ahead. Oops. And let's build a nice little room over here, just to kind of get things started. So again, we don't freeze to death. So, let's go ahead and let everyone start picking stuff up. So the temperature down here, it's 16. This isn't great. Oh, great. My bears are already doing whatever. Oh, hey! Stop that right now. You come and murder this hare, because it is going to try to eat my packaged survival meals. And that is just not going to happen. So, die, 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 die. Okay, good. Oh no! You hit my... Seriously? <sighs> Very disappointing. You had one shot, and what you did was shoot my poor bear. 
All right, so you can see there's a pretty complicated system here uh, of health. So he's got a railgun shot to his body. Nice job, Stone. We'll remember that. So I do have medicine turned on for my bears. I can't remember. Is my doctor any good? Ten. You know what? I had better allow my bears to have real medicine. That's not something I prefer to do necessarily because I don't have a lot of medicine, but it's pretty important that they do this. Okay, so there's actually a bunch of animals around here. So let's set these all to go hunting because I do have a hunter tagged. And I'm going to create a stockpile zone in here that's going to hold corpses. Where should I put it? Um, let's just put it here, although that's a little weird. That'll be fine. So that's going to have animal corpses. I'm also going to put in some pseudo furniture right away. We're going to have a sleeping spot so our colonists have some place to go and sleep. We're going to have animal sleeping spots so they know where they need to go. And let's go ahead and get things started here. So unfortunately, our bears right at the beginning are incredibly useless. All they do is wander around and consume our food. If we're luckily, they'll go hunt, but on the whole, they don't do a whole lot. So where's my doctor, Frederick? What are you doing? Yes, why don't you go treat our poor bear that our hunter immediately shot in the back? Very disappointing. Now, one of the things we need to do absolutely right away is we need to get our production up and running to be able to build walls. We have a little bit of wood to begin with, but we absolutely cannot use that wood for anything. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to build a steel sculpt or I'm sorry, a sculptor's table. Well, that would have been a catastrophe. Stone cutter's table. We're going to use steel rather than wood. It says we don't have enough storage, but we actually will in a few minutes here. And I want to put it someplace where it's not going to end up indoors because I'm not going to want to rebuild it for a while. Um, hmm. You know what? It can go right here. Yes, it's going to have a temperature penalty. That's fine. Let's just make sure that both chunks and bricks can go in there. Let's turn chunks off for this one. I just really want corpses in this one. Except not rotten. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do that. So we'll go ahead and get things hauling. Fortunately, it's below freezing, so this uh, meat won't immediately rot. Now, I need to take a look at their health. Okay, so they're not freezing to death quite yet. Oh, yeah. I need to turn off Glitter World Medicine. We'll come back to Glitter Worlds in a little bit. So it would be ideal if I could break down some of these. It's a steel wall. That's kind of useful. Marble wall. Kind of useful. Hmm. You know, I guess let's deconstruct one of these. So they'll come over and they'll take these apart and that'll give me some materials to allow me to get started. Let's make sure I have someone set on high crafting right. Nope, I do not, but now I do. And they'll come over and take the wall apart and all good things like that because I really need to get this going. <laughs> so a stone cutter's wall. Who's supposed to be building this? Construct. Any of you can construct. Why don't you construct? So typically I'm not going to override their not going to override their priorities a lot, but it can be useful. Because what I need to do is I need to get stone cutting going as soon as possible. So we're going to set up a task here, and these are set up um, per production thing, and you have them do things. So I'm going to have them cut stone blocks. You take stone chunks and you turn them into blocks. I'm going to have them do this forever. I'm okay. Drop on best best stockpiles okay for this one. Um, I don't care about the crafting skill. I do want to reduce the radius because I don't want them running all over the map. So the idea here is, is now you can see kind of highlighted. I'll have my guys bring rocks over, and as soon as they do, they're, someone's going to run over and craft them and drop the bricks on the ground. So I'll go ahead and get that started. Now at the moment, I don't have any queued up for hauling, so that's not going to happen. Okay, good. My bear is fully healed. Good job. Oh, let's go ahead and let's expand our home area. So the home area is sort of a special... Uh, a specially designated area. It's the only place where your colonists will clean or repair anything. So it's pretty important to uh, to have a well-defined home area. The reason that I do not allow it to expand the home area automatically is because if you do, 
Um, it can make these just tremendously huge home areas accidentally, and you'll have your people running all over the map. And what are you doing? All oh, right, and just not getting anything accomplished, and it's a problem. So, okay, what are we doing here? Okay, so I do have some steel. So even though this is a little silly, we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna build some steel walls. I just need, I need something. We've just gotta get going here. We need to have a door to make this indoors. So hopefully they'll come over and build that right away. I just need some place indoor for them to sleep. We just need, again, something to get started. Sleeping on the ground, yeah, this is never good. Okay, well, it's nice that you brought the materials over, but that didn't actually help. So, things do deteriorate due to being unroofed, which is another one of the reasons why I'd really like them to put that roof up. So every colonist also has their own needs, and this is kind of a complex set of modifiers that are going to decide uh, a lot of how they behave. So you can see there's a food meter, how much rest, how much joy they have. You need to make sure they're happy because you will get mood penalties, how beautiful the area is, comfortable space. And then this is sort of their composite mood bar. If this starts to drop too low, uh, you'll start to get warnings if it gets uh, below a certain threshold. They can have mental breaks. The tamer ones, they just wander around stupid. The worse ones, sometimes they'll go on, uh, on like an eating binge and eat all your supplies. What's much more irritating is they go berserk and start trying to kill everyone, and then you have to go beat the crap out of them. And it's just a huge problem. So you can see here, this guy's starting out with very low expectations, and he's sanguine, so he's just kind of calm all the time. Uh, we get a couple days worth of a new colony optimism. He's got some negatives that he slept on the cold ground outside. It's ugly. He's not super great. He's hungry. Anyway, so we'll get that going here. I do have construction. Oh, okay. It's because I have hunting turned up all the way. So we'll turn hunting down to two because I really need you to be constructing and crafting because we do not have a lot of food. This is our total number up here, 37, and we need to get things taken care of and up and running before we all start to starve to death. So, yes, you're going for a walk. That's very nice. Can you please go for a, I'm going to build a wall so that we don't all freeze to death in the Arctic. Come on, seriously. So Let's trigger him and this will keep him moving. Okay, good. So now this is indoors. Excellent. So that's a start. So, we are going to need to get some stone going right away here. I really prefer granite for building things, but it can take kind of a long time to build. So we're just going to go ahead and grab some limestone chunks and get them over so that we get some limestone going. We're also going to get a little extra steel from up here. Holy god, I'm not used to having a constructor this good so early in the game. This is phenomenal. Alright, so he's going to take everything apart. So you can see here already that one of my colonists is running a little low. They've already crossed below this thir first threshold. There's not a whole lot I can do for you at the moment, dude. Sorry. Like, we're in a hurry. We really got to get things going here. I do want to keep an eye on our wildlife because the predators will come and attack you, so you need to keep tabs on them. If they don't have anything to eat, which they don't because we're in the middle of nowhere, they will eventually decide to come hunt your colonists. So you need to be on top of that. It's very important in these kinds of maps. So you can see our colonists are fetching all the stone. That Our constructor here, the guy who's got the high um, crafting skill, is to go ahead and turning those into blocks. So you can see we're starting to build a stockpile of blocks here, so this is good. We're just going to go ahead and build these walls out of limestone. Now, I'm going to need more limestone than we actually have, but that's okay. We're just going to go ahead and get these walls started. They'll come and they'll fill in the blueprints as time goes on. So you can see they're starting to walk further afield, and I need to keep track of them on this map so they don't get eaten by either of the polar bears, or the polar bear or the wolf. Okay, so they're all happy. Fine. I'll hunt them if I have to, I really don't want to. Okay, so now indoors here, it's finally come above freezing, and now the various animal corpses that we have are starting to rot, and that's not great. So, let's see here. We've got some steel still. Let's just go ahead and build a little area here to keep our various corpses in, and then we won't be living in there so that will um, so that won't get too warm then so we want to make sure and keep things frozen you know it's not too much of an effort given that it's nice and chilly outside but again things are going to change here in the near future so hurry up sleep faster go 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 hmm <laughs> 
So we're also going to need to get our research going absolutely as soon as I can here. So you need research to unlock various technology. Okay, so here. So now you see, okay, the polar bear is hunting the wolf. That's great. You go ahead and do that because then the two wild predators will deal with each other and I can come and pick up the pieces later. And it just changed its mind and now it is hunting one of my colonists. So this is trouble. So I need to get him slightly out of the way because I need to try to get the drop on this bear. Having a hard time talking and thinking at the same time. So you really need to be shooting at that bear. You really need to be shooting at that bear. And unfortunately, Frederick is going to have to melee the bear. And I hate that because that's a great way to get yourself killed. Yes, I know Stone is being attacked by a polar bear. We're all pretty upset by it. Okay, excellent. He didn't even take any injuries. Okay, so this polar bear's downed. It's going to die in nine hours. I'm actually just going to ignore it because that way I don't have to deal with its corpse. It's starting to rot yet. So, okay. I need you to haul these things out of the way, please. Go, go, go. So let's make sure that this wolf isn't doing anything bad. Okay, it's not. Okay, so got some more limestone blocks that are getting built up here. So let's go ahead and let's just get the rest of our room designated here. And we'll go ahead and we'll cancel some of this because we'll want a doorway. Let's see here, how am I going to build this? Let's go ahead and put our doorway here for the moment. And that'll be fine. So I need to extend our home area a little bit to make sure that all of these places get built and taken care of. It's very thoughtful that you're sewing, but seriously, that's a terrible idea. It's just going to freeze to death overnight, and you're going to spend all of your time dealing with that. Did that bear survive? Hilarious. Okay, it's up and wondering, but it'll be dead shortly. Not our concern. Sorry, dude. Okay, so it's warning us we need a meal source. We don't have any defenses set up. I know. I'm working on it. Let's go ahead and let's just expand our home area to this whole building that's going to be built for us in the near future. All right. Okay, so we've got to start on our first room here. Um, this is going to give us lots of room to expand internally, so that's going to be really nice. I'm going to go ahead and take a quick break, though, and we'll be back, and I will see you next time. So thanks for watching.